Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm just going to run through an update video. I'm um, just showing you the things that I've changed in the cockpit over the last sort of month. Okay, so the main thing I've changed is the hut assembly. You can see that I've improved the glare shield a lot. So you can see that I've redone the whole glare shield, including, uh, you'll remember that I sort of had a bit of plastic that was on an angle like an A10A on this one. I, I 3D printed new corner pieces, so now it's more like an A10C and it's got the overhang sticking out of it. It's not an A10 unless it has an Oki strap redone the whole UFC so it's this, the same UFC face plate I've just 3D printed a new more realistic case for it I've also put in a HUD camera and the HUD camera box and then the HUD obviously the HUD you can see it's still on the screen there it's not functional um, it's just there for looks you see with it when I'm sitting in the jet the HUD sorry the, the camera won't focus on it but it Looks pretty good. Warning, autopilot. Sort of lines up perfectly. Uh, I still haven't finished this. I'm, I'm just going to fix up that there. I'll 3D print a, um, a thing to go in there to make it look a bit more realistic. I also moved the indexes. I'm still using the F16 style indexes because I don't have a canopy frame. Um, so they were hit sort of F16 style on an angle towards the pilot. I've moved them up onto the HUD assembly like, sort of like the Hornet style, uh, and I extended the glare shield, you can see I've just put this. Uh, I will do a more detailed video on this, namely the UFC, and I'll throw in printing the HUD and that sort of stuff. It's actually pretty simple, all it is is 3D printed. There is um, a bit of plexiglass in there. When I made it, I was thinking about making it functional, but I've realised I can't because my computer doesn't have enough outputs. Um, I'm using three projectors for the outside world and a, project and a large screen for the main instrument panel. DCS won't support putting different viewports on multiple computers, so basically I'm stuck with this. Um, I think even if I put a new graphics card in SLI, I'd still end up with not enough, not being able to warp this surface and have um, another viewport for the HUD itself. I also thought I'd just quickly take this opportunity to explain. I always get asked the question, why don't you put a a canopy frame on it um, and there's a couple of reasons for that the main one being um, if I because I'm using short throw projectors if I do put a canopy frame on it it will cast a shadow on the screen um, sort of that's where it would be which would look terrible the other reason is these side consoles the way they the way you get in and out is you just drag them like that so if I was to attach a large canopy frame to them they'd be sort of stuck together which would make getting in and out a lot more difficult Okay, so one of the other changes I made was um, I just added this switch panel. It's obviously not realistic, but I um, but I rewired up the control that came with the electric seat rails. Um, so now you just push that one, slides back. That one lifts the back part up, and that one lowers the nose. Um, so you can set it up how you want it. I sort of I sort of usually have it F16 style a little bit, so it's tilted back a bit more just for comfort. Um, but it makes getting in and out a lot easier because you can just slide that the whole way back. It comes a fair way back too. It sort of goes back like that. You can see how much easier it is to get in and out. Uh, other things have changed. If you follow my, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see I started making this, which is the new radio head for DCS A10C2. Uh, that is going to get mounted in there and then all these radios will get pushed down and the top VHF gets deleted. Haven't done that yet because I'm still waiting on parts from China and that's not even in the actual game yet. Over on this side you can see that, yeah, if you remember there was a 50 cal liner in there that I was using to put publications and stuff in. I'm deleting that. You can see that I put the I put the new panel for the um, helmet mount display in there and I used the opportunity to, to remove that 50 cal liner. I'm gonna put a more realistic container in there with a lid on it for maps and stuff and then I'm going to put a, a realistic looking data recorder there. I'm working on that now. Uh, one of the other things I was working on was I said in an earlier video I wanted to build the consoles up a little bit. I don't like how it's just flat here. Um, so I started working on that. I basically just built a wooden frame for both sides. That's going to get bolted up like that to give it a bit more height. Um, I actually tried the other side there, but I just I couldn't get it to look good because the MDF I couldn't get it to to curve to that shape. 
Um, it just ended up looking terrible and peeling off, so I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board for that one. I'm probably going to, just going to have to carve it out of a solid bit of timber, but I am still working on that. Uh, another thing, I bought a new headset, finally got rid of that concoction that I had, and splashed on one of these Thrustmaster um, Air Force style ones. Um, I got it on Amazon for 100 bucks, so I couldn't say no to that deal. Uh, one of the other things I changed, I forgot to mention, is the Tissel panel has been deleted just like in the real aircraft. If you remember on one of my other videos, I had a sort of a, a fake panel I made up in there. I got rid of it because I never use it anyway and it was really easy to update with a blank piece of plastic. You've seen the fuel panel in the last video. Somebody sent the code to me, so the indicator, the little OLED screen in there now works, which means I could delete the temporary fuel gauge that I had running in this spot here and I put a UHF repeater. This is just temporary. I will put a better faceplate that's backlit and an OLED in there um, once I get around to it, but I'm still contemplating whether I really need that or whether I should put the G meter that you should be on the glare shield. I might put the G meter down here. Either that or I'll, I, I am secretly planning on building a whiskey compass and a G meter and I might attach them to the hut up here. DCS A10C2 was released. This cockpit right now is not running DCS A10C2. The only reason is I'm still using a very, very old version of Helios, which is the software that's running all the buttons, and I can't work out how to get that old version to work with Tank Killer. All the things in this pit that are run with Arduino, so all the indicator lights and some of the A10 specific panels like the radio stack and the um, countermeasure set controller, all that just worked in A10C2, so DCS BIOS still works. No big issue, I'm flying DCS A10C2 at the moment with VR because of the new helmet mount inside, so why wouldn't you? I, I, I won't be able to get this working with the helmet mount site unless I go back to using track IR, which I can't because it, on, a, on a surface this large, it just makes me nauseous. So basically I'm just gonna be either flying A10C2 in this without the Scorpion HUD, or if I want to use the Scorpion HUD, I'll use VR. So once again, thanks heaps for watching. Um, stay tuned and make sure you subscribe. I've got more videos coming. I'm editing the video about the UFC together right now.